Ah, this, 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 this is a little bit annoying. Not gonna lie, this noise is a little bit annoying. I've been in this world for about 10 minutes and trying to prepare for this episode and Etho has has brought Sethbot into the house. He's brought Sethbot into the house and it's just, yeah, just, just listen to it. It's like trying to be soothing, but then again, no. And apparently because Etho is the owner, I can't seem to like move this guy or I, I can I do this following true? I don't think he's going to follow me. But I, need, I really desperately need to get rid of this noise. I think I'm going to have to break it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Also, oh, what's making that humming noise? I, oh, I know what it is. Yeah, I know what it is. Etho has also added a little bit of a questionable power source. <laughs> questionable in the, in the terms of being on our second floor where we're supposed to have a roof and I'm not going to build the roof. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to build the roof. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Experts. I am very very excited today because last episode to remind you, we found a donkey and oh, that was so perfectly timed. <laughs> If you all remember, Etho had made a mission board and the very first thing he wanted me to get was a donkey. We gave him the dank null and I guess he's taken down the request for a donkey, but since we found one, we gotta give it to him. And I want to present this donkey in, in a fun way. <laughs> I want to do some crazy stuff to present this donkey. The very first thing I want to do though is something that I read in the comments that I just thought was way too funny to pass up on. We're gonna name the donkey dank null just like the, the the thing that we renamed to donkey is called so there we go <laughs> dank null the donkey <laughs> he looks ridiculous now i bet not everybody knew this but i think it's quirk that adds this little feature here if you put gunpowder down you can actually light it uh, or set it alight and i'm assuming if i would have like tnt on the end that would actually trigger so this is like a fuse line i think this is super cool and totally something that should maybe be in vanilla. Right, so let's try this out. I crafted up some tiny TNT just because they're absolutely adorable. And then, boom, is that gonna explode it? Oh, <laughs> no, that was, oh, that was not good. Okay, so let's try with the real stuff. And I mean, yeah, that works. Okay, so that, de <laughs> that definitely works. That's great. Now the second test I wanna do is, can I read the block state with an observer so maybe if i do something like that and then have gunpowder in front of it i mean in theory this this should really work but if i do that is that going to yeah okay so that reads the changed block state that's great that's even better even better than the tnt so i can detect when the gunpowder is traveling through and i can then use the gunpowder to light up tnt do you see where all of this is leading if you guess cake, uh, it's a pre pretty bad guess. Pre pretty bad guess. If you, however, guessed exploding gift with flying don donkey as a result, then you're probably spot on. What if we create a fuse that he has to light, and as he does that, it leads up to a big present that explodes, and out of it comes a flying donkey. I mean, it sounds it sounds a little bit it sounds a little bit weird, but I think with the modded stuff that we have available to us, we can probably make it happen. The only thing is, though, we're gonna need a test subject because I've only ever seen one donkey, and I don't want him to die. So, oh, this is a bit this is a bit unfortunate. Don't look at me, sheep. But uh, I'm gonna just just borrow you in order to get the sheep to fly. I'm planning on using these fans. Now these can be controlled with redstone and you can set the range, which is actually great. These are the same fans that Etho is using in his mob spawner. So let's just see if we can make this uh, speed range. If I want the range to be like something low, like three and then always on. Yeah, that's gonna elevate the entity just the perfect amount, I think. Now will our test subject be fine with this? He will. Absolutely fine. So that would be <laughs> the final display. So the present sits in the middle, it explodes, 
and out flies the donkey. Brilliant. I really want to get everything right with this, so we're gonna have to do some testing. But I, I don't mind TNT testing, to be honest. I really don't mind. So I'm thinking we're gonna have a 5x5 present that will design this and make it a little bit prettier. But just for the sake of actually finding out what can be done, I guess we just fill this up and then we put TNT. I really want everything to explode so that there's no present left. So maybe... If we put TNT like that, we need to make sure that all of them get lit at the same time. Now the plan would be to have our donkey down in the middle, safely hidden away. And then once all of this is blown up, it like pops up from the ground, right? So, I mean, if we want to be safe, we should probably use the range of the fan. Say that we have that up at 8 and then put our test subject down. He is then going to be hovering. Yeah, maybe... Maybe that's good. That's going to be really important that all of these TNTs blows up at the same time. And that that middle block gets destroyed as well. And so... Actually... I think we do that. I'm going to... I'm using leaves here. Because leaves, to my knowledge, has the least blast resistance of all blocks in Minecraft. It may, it may be the same as dirt. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I just know that they are very, very weak. Two TNT explosions. Oh no! I ignited it! Oh... Dang, okay. Well, the sheep survived, but it did take damage. The explosion was satisfying. Why did one of the TNT blocks explode over here, though? That's that's not great. I don't know if I fully closed it up. That, that was kind of half failed because of me accidentally igniting it. No, 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 no. You, Mr. Test Subject, come back here. I'm, I know this is scary, but don't worry. You, you're in safe hands. So I think we have the explosion narrowed down and the present actually all exploded. We just need to make sure that the donkey is safe and then we need to make sure that the timing is correct. So I'm going to do a little bit of experiment for this next explosion with repeaters and timings. And these are advanced redstone repeaters from random things and they allow you to do, they have a little interface like this. And I think what this means is that Turn on delay is the time it takes from it getting a redstone signal to it outputting a redstone signal. And then this is for how many ticks it's going to be on. So let's just try if that's correct and set that to uh, 50. So it's going to be on for 50 ticks, but it's going to start after 150 ticks. So if I send a redstone signal, do I even have anything to send a redstone signal? I guess I, guess I have to use observers. Yeah, so that's just waiting and... We should get a signal from it eventually. Yeah, okay. So that's probably how it works. It waited 150 ticks. Now, for an ex TNT to explode, I thought in my brain that it's 400 ticks. But I'm not actually sure if that's true. So I guess we have to test that as well. Which, I don't mind. I honestly don't mind. I set it to 400. I think that must be wrong. That feels very, very, very long. <laughs> explode this. And the timing is off. How off is it? Very off. <laughs> very, very off. That can't have been more than 100 ticks that the TNT was being ignited. Not even that, like 40 ticks? Maybe it's 40 ticks. Maybe that's where I've got the 400 from. There it goes. I guess we'll just have to try again. So we got it at 80. And... Oh, that was, that was perfect. So it's 80 ticks it takes for TNT to ignite. Alright, so here's what we're gonna try. I've now configured this to have... 100 ticks so after after 100 ticks or so 20 ticks after the tnt explodes it's gonna light two dispensers 20 ticks later it's gonna fly or or make the sheep fly <laughs> and that should be good uh, that should be good everything is still in theory though isn't it right let's uh let's actually give it let's actually give this a test i'm 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 quite nervous to be honest I'm quite nervous okay present is rigged everything is a go Oh, this would be glorious if it works the way I think it would. There goes the TNT. And that explodes that. Shoots away two TNT. That's not good. And... Oh. <laughs> right. I may have to use obsidian to protect the circuits underneath. I think the problem we're having with the TNT that flies around is the fact that the block ignites the TNT just one tick before the redstone ignites it. Which means that the front two gets ignited 
first and then these two one tick later so instead i'm gonna wire it in the center because i believe the tnt blast will be enough to take out two observers and a dirt block or two dirt blocks well hopefully hopefully it will be enough so if i do something like that actually i can't do that yet but the tnt is gonna go here 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 and here that should be a more even explosion. And then I've also used obsidian as the floor this time. And I've used observers to wire this a little bit better. That may very well still blow up though. Ethos present test number three. Hopefully now everything works. I'm 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 not hope I'm not having my hopes high though. Oh, did that not even ignite the TNT? Oh the other components launched. <laughs> the other components launched. Oh, look at this. The problem is that leaves do not transfer redstone power. Did I not say that before? I am such an idiot. I am such an idiot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Test number four. Please. Please work. Please work. Yeah, there goes the TNT. And it did blow up some of the redstone to the repeater, to the dispensers. That's fine, but... Where's our, where's our sheep? Where's our sheep? Oh, come on, man. It didn't blow up that thing. Look at it. Ah, oh, we're so, we're so close. <laughs> we're so close. All right, this should be the final test. Hopefully, every little thing is taken care of. I like how the present has turned from a wool present <laughs> into a dirt, dirt present over time as well. But here we go. Test number five. That's the TNT ignited. Perfect. The present explodes, and are we gonna get any anything happening? Yeah, there's the fireworks. That one did not trigger. Don't know why. And I said, and oh no, oh no. Why is the fan not turning on? <laughs> That's silly. What have I done here? Test number... Uh, who's counting, right? Who's, who's counting? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm determined. I'm determined. No! No! I mean... <laughs> I think that was a success. I must have just mistimed or misconfigured one of these repeaters down here to not yeah no turn on delay there needs to be a turn on delay here so i've rebuilt the whole structure in the area where i wanted to be and i wasn't gonna run another test but then i found a new test subject and i just i just have to make sure that this works right so we got our present I think everything is done. Let's just make sure. Yeah, this time that is correct. The redstone is a lot simplified. <laughs> I don't know why I wired it so poorly in the other place. I think... I mean, I've said that before, but I think this is it. I think this is it. So let's try it in the, in the prime location. And I guess I'll have to repair the area around it afterwards. There goes the TNT. And... Goes and there's the donkey. He did take a little bit of damage and then he died. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I'm really glad I tested it here right now. That is definitely looking like a present, isn't it? And that's just wool. That's just chiseled wool taking the the yellow wool and magenta wool and just changing the texture. I absolutely, absolutely love the chisel mod. That. That is looking fantastic. So now what we're going to do is prep these dispensers with our firework rockets. And I guess it's time to... That's on 12. I think I can put this to 11 actually. And this is timed correctly. It's going to be on for a very long time just to make sure that Ito can catch the donkey. Speaking about the donkey, I, I guess it's time. I guess it's time for Danknal to actually take position. I wonder if he's gonna grow up before Etho <laughs> before Etho discovers this present. He may very well. Dear Etho, I've got a present for you. Use the flint and steel in this chest to ignite the fuse, this fuse, next to this chest. Observe, you will need the lasso. Lasso and flint and steel. I mean that that's that he got he gotta get that right. Hopefully, hopefully that's understandable. 
I'm really, really excited to see if he discovers this and <laughs> to see if he likes his gift. Mostly I'm excited to see if it actually works. I mean, we did, we did do a bunch of tests. Oh, you know what I forgot though? <laughs> you know what I forgot? <laughs> I forgot to place the final TNT down. Yep, that, <laughs> that could have been bad. I realized that the present is not really something that's gonna help us towards the goal of finishing this quest pack and being true experts to getting to bragging rights in the quest book here. But let's be honest, fl flying donkeys, exploding presents, totally worth it. That being said, it is time to move on for today. And I noticed earlier that Etho has been working on a little bit of a setup here. He's been working on an auto sifting machine by the looks of things. And I mean, I love these things. I really do love these things. I don't know if Etho knows, but you can actually rename these and have, <laughs> have people work for you. If you take a name tag, you get their skin. Yeah, but he set this up, but by the looks of things, if this were to be running, so I guess if I'd press, if I do something like that, maybe, or how do I turn this on like that? Uh, maybe this should be high, shouldn't really mess too much with this thing. But yeah, if this is running, I think that we are losing out quite quickly on our power sources. Yeah, yeah, we are definitely losing out on our power sources because these machines... They generate resources for you. They take cobblestone and you smash it down and give it to this thing and they generate resources. And then he has an auto crafter. And as you can see, that's a lot of ores already and diamond blocks, etc, etc. 512 for that thing and 1024 for this thing. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty mad. Now already, I think these cables are bottlenecking this because these cables, they're only a thousand, right? No, they're actually 2000. Okay, they're 2000. RF per tick, so they are not bottlenecking it. I think the very first thing we should do is probably create some sort of power room or some sort of power area where we have our power generators in the same place because at the moment it's really hard to keep track of everything and with Ethos new installation on our roof there I guess that's kind of temporary to backfill our power because it definitely it adds like 600 RF per tick up there and this thing can produce 800 RF per tick I think when needed but, I mean, it's it's not a lot of power, but more importantly, it's super, super messy, isn't it? So we should probably invest in a, a new power generator room. I wonder if I should just do it off of the basement here, possibly. It's maybe a good idea off to this side, but I can hear the sheep and the cows right on top of this. So I may have to move them. Also, this auto torch placement stuff is really, really handy. I think we got it from our loot bag in the last episode, possibly. I really want to try and keep with the block palette that we've been using for the house. So this hemp, hempcrete is what I'm going to use for the floor. I really love this texture though and this color. I think it's, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Then I'm thinking lead sheet metal for the walls. And I'm also lowering this one just so we get a little bit of Y elevation. Now this room is coming together. I'm not going to lie. It looks very evil. It looks very, very evil. But I think it's going to be good for our little power generator. The only problem is... You hear that? The stupid animal no noises. So, I've crafted up an, a sound dampener and I think what we can do is with these sound patterns and this recorder, if I remember correctly, I used this in Hermit's Guys. I keep this on, it records different things, it picks up all the different things and then if we shut it off, we should have the ability to select, yes. So, we want to remove cow step. We want to remove um, sheep ambience, sheep step, grass break from when they when they eat the grass, and then we take all of these things and we put it in this box here. It's just going to remove all of those noises that we just selected. <laughs> that is so cool. For our new power room, I've decided to craft up a bunch more of these, or three more of the numismatic dynamo, so that we have four in total, four times. 8, 32, right? Yeah, 32. So we're going to be able to generate 3,200 RF per tick if I can also build upgrades required. So I need three upgrade kits, the Electrum one. One, two, three. One, two, three, fuel catalyzer. Catalyzer. Nice. I think this will keep us uh, happy with power for a while, specifically if we can just find a way to automatically produce string and gold nuggets in the future. Then, I mean, this trade is just so good 
Uh, we're even backlogged on emeralds now. That we're actually going to have quite a nice power supply. We do need some better cables though. Hardened flux ducts can do 8,000 RF per tick. So I think... I mean, that's just an Invar upgrade. Invar is just nickel and iron. I think this is the way I want to set this up. So we will have our four pneumatic, pneumatic dynamos sitting, facing down in this room. We'll feed them emeralds from the side or the top. And then over here, we'll have our power cube and our reader to see how much power we have. And then we'll have one input in the bottom and then we can send the power outwards to the sides or upwards or whatever. The only problem is I don't want to take down the power before I know that I can generate new power immediately because our whole storage system is reliant on the power. Oh, that being said, I've actually missed one very crucial thing. We need the other upgrade kit before I can apply this one. I gotta say, running cables in a smart way in modded Minecraft is always something that I've enjoyed. I don't know why, I can't really explain it. It's kind of a weird, kind of a weird hobby. I guess this goes up here, yeah. It's not a hobby, it's a, it's a thing you have to do. But I really, really enjoy it. While rebuilding this, I'm gonna try and set up this autocrafter so that it's a little bit more automatic. So I made myself a reinforced filter and what I should be able to do here is set the amount of items allowed inside the autocrafter. So if I set that to 64 and specify that string is whitelisted and gold nuggets is whitelisted, that should mean that it shouldn't be allowed to have more than 64 of each. Because the problem is if we just send all gold nuggets and string in here, it's just gonna fill up with one of those things. I'm gonna redo this. I'm gonna set this to 32 gold nuggets and 32 string, just so we can test it out. And then I have a servo here. You're gonna be always extract. So now if I just put, let's just see, uh, always on. Let's require redstone for a minute. If I just put these things in here, that should never have more than 32 in each here. And that seems to be working, e I think. Which means that it's never ever gonna be able to fill the inventory with just golden nuggets. That's really important. Cool, so that's making the name tags. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the integrated dynamics that Ethan made. <laughs> I'm really worried about that. I may just have to... Yeah, I may just have to do it the old-fashioned way. And then Ethan can upgrade this whenever he feels like it. So, if we do something like that and then send the name tags into here. Then take the name tags out and send them into the dynamos. That should be fully automatic. The final thing is to connect that up and then put a servo in here whitelisting emeralds and we're gonna say that it's allowed to send one at a time and it needs to go round robin that way it should in theory always just send one emerald and it should go to all pneumatic dynamo and not just fill up one of them so let's try that out we ignore that we should be getting one emerald in each of these i mean this this had an emerald in it i think from the beginning the only problem with this is that these pipes these item ducts are really really slow <laughs> like terribly terribly slow and that may be a problem but yeah like i said i'm, I'm probably gonna ask etho to upgrade this using the integrated dynamics because i don't think i'm i don't think i'm skilled enough to do it i don't think i'm skilled enough to do it i think this is actually gonna work out really well all we need to do now is to come up with automatic production of gold nuggets and automatic production of string and then we're then we're set then we're generating quite a bit of power just using bob here we may also need to add more bobs as as, as time goes by but we have the capacity in theory to do 32 uh, or 3200 rf per tick which is more than the sift thing that ethos made over there requires and i think this turned out pretty cool it looks pretty cool i wanted to put a display in the back there but i'm gonna wait till Etho has done the integrated dynamics and then then we can add something there but yeah i'm i'm, I'm I'm actually quite proud of this. <laughs> I'm quite proud of this one. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today. I'm I'm super nervous. Super nervous to see if Ethos present work. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Make sure you don't miss it over at, at Ethos channel. But anyway, like I said, that's going to do it. I really do hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I'll see you dudes in the next episode.